Before we can use Excel data in PowerPoint, we have to have a way to get our Excel data to PowerPoint. Much of the time that will begin by starting with our Excel spreadsheet because we created a spreadsheet or somebody else does that has this data that we'd like to present, whether we're presenting it as a chart or presenting it as a table. So we could select a chart, for example, or we could choose to select some data. I'm going to select four months of data here out of this section of our solar energy cost and payback estimator. Now I need to copy it. I can either right click and choose copy here, or I can go up to the clipboard, group in the home tab and click copy. Either way, I want it on my clipboard. And now I want to switch over to PowerPoint. If PowerPoint's already running, I can just alt tab to get there. If not, I'll want to go ahead and start my presentation by clicking the start menu. But here we are in our presentation. Now I want to paste this information. So I can right click again and I have a series of paste options. There are five of them and we'll talk about all of these in just a moment. But we can use destination styles. We can retain our formatting at the source. Both of these methods effectively make this PowerPoint information and not Excel information anymore. Then I have the ability to say I'd actually like to embed this information right here so that I'm creating a copy of it. I would like to save it as a picture and this has some utility. Again, all it is is a screenshot now, an image. So this is exactly what it looked like when it was sitting over in Microsoft Excel. It's just a screen scraping of that information. Or I could say, you know, I just want to keep the text only. And you'll notice if I choose that, it, it doesn't look necessarily that great, but it's, it could be better or it could be worse. And all of these choices are reversible. While I'm right here, I can make a different choice. I can say, oh, I'd, I'd like to do that, or I'd like to do this. And if I make a choice I really don't like, I can always just choose to delete. And I could then say that I wanted to go ahead and copy and paste again because I still have that information sitting on my clipboard. Now, in addition to those five major methods that we have, we have some more. If I go to the clipboard group on the home tab and click paste, there are my first five, and then here is paste special. It shows the source as this workbook, and it says, what would you like to do with it? So my choices are to paste it as an Excel worksheet object, and that's actually the same as the choice that said to embed. Or I could say I wanted to paste a link back to that worksheet object. Additionally, I have the choice to say I'd like it as HTML text, formatted text, unformatted text, and not just one picture format, but I have two metafile choices and two bitmap choices. So I have a wide range of methods that I can use. If I choose, for example, bitmap and say OK, I'm done. And at this point, if I say, hmm, I might want to do something different, I'll once again need to delete that and paste again where I will get my options here. So let's take a look at all of these options and see what they mean so that we'll know when I say, let's go ahead and embed this or let's use the destination styles, what the implications of that are for using our Excel data in PowerPoint. So one of the first decisions I want to make is after I have my data no longer in Excel, but over here in PowerPoint and I'm working with it, do I still need to be able to have it act like Excel data? If I don't, then I have a number of choices that will make this data not Excel data anymore. For example, if I'm willing to lose my Excel functionality, I can go ahead and use those first two choices. Use destination formatting, use source formatting. All I care about is how it looks. And from that point forward, I'll edit this as a table in PowerPoint, much as if it was a table sitting in Microsoft Word. I can also choose keep text only. And my choices then are HTML text or formatted or unformatted text. And as you saw, I also have the ability to say, go ahead and paste this here as a picture using one of these formats. You might think there's not much utility for that, but there really is, particularly if we have a lot of tabular data and we no longer need to work with it in Excel. It's all done, but we really do need to make it look good no matter how we size it. So we will be using almost all of these choices in this course because they make sense at different times with our presentation and with our data. But if I'd like to retain Excel functionality, I still need to be able to calculate in this table of information that I'm pulling in. 
I still need to be able to use the formatting tools that are available to me in Excel, not the formatting tools in PowerPoint. In that case, then, I need to retain my Excel functionality, and I have two choices. The first choice is the choice that was available to us in that group of five called Embed. And when I embed, what happens is I get a copy of that entire workbook, all of the sheets in it, copied into my PowerPoint presentation. Now, it is a copy, so if my original Excel workbook changes, I'll never see those changes here. This is a separate copy, but because Excel is in the PowerPoint workbook, I have Excel functionality, Excel formatting, all of the tools available to me in Excel. I can even create new charts from data here in PowerPoint from a workbook that I've embedded from Excel. I also have the choice to link. When I link, what I do is I create a connection back to the Excel data. I'll obviously then need to be able to get to that Excel workbook anytime I want to change things. And I'll typically use this when I have control over the workbook and the presentation so I know that they'll be kept together. Or if I really don't have the ability to embed and the data is going to change. So I have a workbook that gets data from one of our sales systems or from a data warehouse or gets some data for us from SharePoint. And I just want the newest data. So every time I open my presentation, it goes back and says, okay, Excel, what do you have for me? In that case, I'll link. In both of these cases, though, I still have Excel data. In the first case, a copy here in PowerPoint. In the second case, the ability to return to my data source. And then I have the ability to build in Excel functionality by saying I would like to insert an Excel spreadsheet or insert a chart here in PowerPoint. Let's go see how that works real quickly. So I have a choice to insert a table into a presentation. And this gives me a, a table like I would get in Microsoft Word. But if I go to insert in the table group, if I click the drop down arrow, I have a choice to insert an Excel spreadsheet right here in PowerPoint. And here's this little spreadsheet. I can make it bigger if I want to. And you'll notice it's got a sheet. I can add other sheets. And when I'm in here, take a look. Now I'm not seeing PowerPoint ribbon anymore. I'm seeing Excel ribbon, complete with conditional formatting and merge and center and formulas. No longer PowerPoint. Here, I've inserted Excel and its functionality right into PowerPoint. When I click again, I'm back into PowerPoint with the familiar PowerPoint tools. And the same thing happens if I insert a chart. It used to be in former versions of PowerPoint that it used a separate charting tool called Microsoft Graph, but not anymore. If I go and insert any kind of a chart, what I'm seeing is Microsoft Excel. So if I say I want to insert a column chart and say, OK, this chart that I get is based on a Microsoft Excel workbook. So here I am in Microsoft Excel and I have access to my Excel tools here. So whenever we're using Excel data in PowerPoint, our first choice is, do we still need to work with it as Excel data? In that case, we'll want to either embed link or insert a new spreadsheet and type data in or insert a chart. If it's fine that I lose my Excel functionality, the data's all done, it's not gonna change. All I need to do now is be able to present and manipulate it. I might find either that using source or destination formatting or deciding that I'd like to present it in a picture format might be the better choice.